Hi Year 6, today as part of your Greek topic I am going to be doing a sort of cook along to make mini spanakopita which is some Greek spinach and feta pastry. So I hope you enjoy and get into the ancient Greek spirit with this recipe. Is cut the onion in half and then put them uh, cut side down on your chopping board and then you want to chop them finely and remember to tuck your fingers in when you're using a knife okay and then we're going to chop it in the other direction so that it makes little squares Um, now you need to chop two cloves of garlic. So to cut the garlic, I like to slice it in one direction first, kind of like what we did with the onion, and then turn it on its side like that and then slice it in another direction. Well, let's see if that works, yeah. So then you get almost like little sticks. And then cut those into smaller pieces. Being really careful about your fingers because the garlic clove is very small so you need to be working slowly and methodically. Okay. When we're cooking you need to tidy up as you go. So I'm going to, if you have food waste at home you can put the skins in your food waste. Right you might need an adult to help you for this part so we're going to turn on the hob onto a medium heat. That means that the flame isn't enormous, it's just a medium sized flame. Okay, whilst that's heating up, you need to put a little bit of butter or oil in, probably about a teaspoon. You don't want too much more than that. Okay, whilst that's heating up, you need to get your spinach ready. I use frozen spinach and I've got about eight of the little cubes of spinach. Once my oil's nice and hot, you can hold your hand over it, do not touch the saucepan. Hold your hand over it so you can feel the heat. Um, then I will put in the onions first. Now we don't put the garlic in at the same time as onions because otherwise the garlic will burn and it'll taste horrible. So put those in and then we're gonna saute them which means that we're going to fry them gently for about 10 minutes until they're really soft. Get yourself a wooden spoon and you can move them around in the pan. Okay, so now you can hear that the onions are sizzling a little bit, but you need to keep an eye on them and keep moving them around the saucepan until they're translucent. These onions are nearly there. They've changed colour a little bit, they're becoming a bit white and almost see-through. So now I'm going to add my garlic. I'm going to add this to the pan and cook it for about two minutes until it's really fragrant so you can smell the garlic. I'm using the back side of my knife so I don't blunt the knife. Now you're going to stir it around and you should smell the garlic as you go. Garlic only needs about two or three minutes to cook and then we will add the spinach. Mm, I can smell the garlic now. So I think that these are just about ready. So I'm now going to add my frozen spinach. If you are adding fresh spinach, I would suggest adding a couple of handfuls at a time and waiting for it to wilt. So that's when it goes, where well, basically it looks more like this. So I'm going to put in my frozen spinach. Actually, I'm just going to chuck the whole bowl in. And then I'm going to keep on stirring that round until the spinach has melted so it's no longer frozen. Mmm, that looks good. And then I'm going to add some salt and pepper and a couple of herbs if you have some. So I'm gonna add some pepper, a couple of turns, I've got a bit of salt. So always putting salt on your hand first so you don't put too much in. And then I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit in. You don't have to use salt if you don't want to. And then I have got here some parsley, so I know that's quite a nice flavor. I, d I feel like baking's a bit of a science. I think cooking's an art. I think you should just make it up as you go. So I'm just going to sprinkle as much in as I like. This is some oregano and some sage. You don't have to use any herbs, you can just go 
with the ingredients that you have on your list. So I'm going to stir those in, and now you can, I can really smell those herbs as they are coming out with the spinach and onions and garlic. Okay, this is what your spinach mixture will look a little bit like once it's ready. What I now need to do is I'm going to leave this to cool down, and in the meantime, I'm going to get my phyllo pastry ready. So if you've got a box one like this, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to come in this plastic, and then this is actually your phyllo pastry. Phyllo pastry is really thin, delicate pastry. So you're going to very gently unfold it. and take off two sheets. So for each spanakopita, we're going to be using two sheets. So, there we go. And I'm gonna fold this back up and put it to one side on a plate. Okay, what I'm going to do now is melt a little bit of butter with some olive oil and vegetable oil. And I'm gonna melt it in the microwave you can, should only use a microwave if the material is glass or like the material of a plate. Never put, well, don't really put plastic in the microwave and definitely don't put metal in. So I'm going to put this in the microwave for just about 10 seconds. There we go, my butter is completely melted. And what I'm going to do, I've got my first sheet of phyllo pastry here. Using a pastry brush or a spoon, maybe a spoon is better. We're going to dip it in, brush off any excess, and then just brush it really gently with just a little bit of that butter and oil mix. Delicious. Okay. On top of that, you're going to put your next piece of phyllo pastry, and this will make sure that the pastry tastes delicious, basically. Okay. And then again, you will brush a little bit more of that butter oil mix. Okay, with your now two buttered pieces of phyllo pastry, what I need you to do is take a knife, being very careful of your fingers, and divide it into three strips of pastry. So, if I separate these, they're into three long strips of pastry. And what we're going to be doing is putting our spinach, feta, an egg mix in a little blob here and rolling these into spanakopita triangles. Okay, my spinach mix has now cooled down a little bit. So, with a bowl, I'm going to get my two eggs and crack them gently into the bowl. If you get a bit of shell in there, don't worry. Use the half shell and scoop it out. Don't use your fingers. Okay. Cracked in my two eggs, pop these in the bin, so it's just a very small turning motion so that the eggs are all mixed together. Okay, so now our eggs are ready, I'm going to get my feta and I need 200 grams of it. With my feta now, I'm going to cut it into cubes, I reckon, so it's nice and easy to mix. So they're in nice little chunks being really careful of my fingers whilst I'm cutting these. It's nice and soft, this is quite a nice part of it. Okay, so my feta's ready. I'm slightly smaller. And my eggs are ready. So I'm having a look at my spinach mixture now. It's all ready. So what I'm going to do, and I'm gonna make sure here. So I'm going to pour my eggs in, making sure I get all of that egg out. And, the feta in gracefully and then I'm going to give it a really good mix so that it's all combined together what's quite good is actually whilst you're mixing it if you're using a wooden spoon you can break up the feta a little bit so that it's not in enormous chunks as I've just done so <laughs> I'm going to make my chunks a little bit smaller by almost squashing the feta down a little bit. And as you can see now, it's come together in more of a mixture that stays together. Okay, and now we're going to go back onto our phyllo pastry and start putting it all together, ready to go in the oven. 
Who's excited? Right. First sheet of phyllo in front of me. I'm going to take a tablespoon, so a serving spoon, and take out about a sort of heaped uh, tablespoon of my mixture and pop it away from the edge of the phyllo. So if you can see, I've left a sort of corner here. Oh, excuse me, luckily my hands are clean. Um, I've left a corner here, and now this part you might need to watch closely. I'm going to fold it over to make a triangle. Ooh, okay, let's roll with that. And I'm going to fold it over again to continue that triangle pattern. So here we go, I've got a nice clean triangle. I'm going to fold it at diagonal and straight over, and it, the pastry sort of moves with you on this. And then I have my first mini hand spanakopita, and I'm going to put it on a plate and make the rest of them. I am on to making my very last three mini spanakopitas. Now, my phyllo pastry has been out of the fridge for a little while, and you'll notice that it gets a bit flaky. So I think you want to move quite quickly with it or keep it in the fridge for as long as possible. Okay, I've got my two oven dishes in front of me. I need to put a little bit of oil in. I use an oil spray, but you can just drizzle a little bit of oil. And this is so that your spanakopitas don't stick. And then, so when you take them out of the oven, that they stay all in one piece. Okay. What you need to do is put them in one, one single layer. So that means none of them are going to be over, overlapping each other. So I'm going to just place them on. I think it's a little bit like Tetris. It's like a puzzle. You're going to have to try and get as many as you can to fit in the dish as possible. So these are all almost ready to go in the oven. But to make sure that they go all lovely and golden brown, I'm going to, with a brush or again with a spoon, put a little bit more of either butter or a little bit of oil on the top of them so that they go golden brown. They need to be in the oven for roughly half an hour. But depending on how hot your oven is, maybe keep an eye on them. Maybe check them after 20 minutes and then check them every five minutes after that. I'm just going to finish doing these and then carefully open the oven and pop them in. Oh, last bit. I made a bit of a mess here, so this is the part when they go into the oven, when you do the tidying up instead of your adult doing it. At okay, these are ready to go in the oven now. The oven is incredibly hot, so you need to be very, very careful. You need to open the door enough that you can get it right in and just slide them in very gently, maybe using an oven glove, that would be a good idea. These don't fit on one shelf, so I'm going to put them on two shelves. Close the oven, and I'm going to start a timer, and I'll check back in with you guys when they're good and ready. Okay, so it's been actually about 45 minutes uh, and I'm ready to take them out of the oven. So I've turned the oven off, I'm gonna open it and I've got my oven gloves on and <gasps> voila, they smell delicious. So I'm going to leave them on here to cool down and then I'm gonna try them in a little bit. Okay, I'm piling these up ready for people in my house to enjoy because it's nearly lunchtime, so maybe you can share them with people in your house as well. I'm going to have these with a little salad on the side, but do whatever you wish with it. See you soon. Bye!